setting up your environment in Sockeye. So now that we've connected to Sockeye, we can start to move around in the system and get familiar with the environment. In this video, we'll walk through what you can expect to see when first connecting to Sockeye and how to begin setting up your working environment. As mentioned in the Sockeye for Noobs Part 2 video, when you first connect to Sockeye, you'll be brought to your home directory on a login node. This space functions as a sort of landing spot for Sockeye and can be a jumping off point to move to other file systems. You can confirm you're in your home directory by typing the pwd or print working directory command in the command prompt. This is a space that is only available to you and has 50 gigabytes of storage space. Your home space is ideal for storing software you wish to install locally, configuration files, and light interactive analysis. In addition to your home directory, you have access to two other directories in Sockeye, Project and Scratch. Unlike your home directory, which is only accessible to you, these directories are shared by all users in your allocation. By typing the print underscore quota command, you'll be able to see the storage space in all three directories of your allocation, including how much storage you're currently using and what the total storage quota is for each directory. It's worth noting that there's a limit of 1 million files on your scratch space. So it's important to keep an eye on that if you're going to be generating a lot of small files. This command also lists the path of the three directories and your allocation code. You will need these file paths to navigate to your project and scratch spaces and the allocation code to submit jobs. So it's important to know how to find them if you're unsure of what they are. Moving on to your project space. This is your main storage space on Sockeye and has five terabytes of storage by default. This space is suitable for such things as persistent project data, locally installed software and virtual environments that you share with your project team, and small interactive analyses. An important thing to note about Project Space is that it's read-only on compute nodes, which means that you can access data for analyses from your Project Space, but you're not able to write your analysis output here. But don't worry, because this is something that can be written to your Scratch Space, which I'll discuss shortly. Before I move to talking about Scratch Space, it's very helpful to set up your own working directory in your Project Space to help keep your personal work separate from your teammates. Let's move to the Project Space now by typing cd for change directory slash arc slash project slash st hyphen cwl hyphen one slash and then press enter. Here, st-cwl-1 is an example of the allocation code. To get your allocation code, as I mentioned before, you can use the command of print underscore quota. We can again confirm where we are by typing the pwd command. It can also be helpful to type the ls command to take a look at what other files and directories already exist in your project space. We'll now make our own new directory by typing mkdir for make directory plus the new directory name. It's advisable to use your CWL or another name that clearly indicates that this is your folder, but we'll leave that up to you. Moving on to your scratch space, you're also allocated five terabytes of storage by default, much like your project space. Your scratch space is read and write on compute nodes meaning that you can access data for analysis from here, and you can also direct the outputs of your analysis to here. Because this is the only space on Sockeye that data can be written to during jobs, it is not ideal for the long-term storage of data, and we strongly urge users to continuously move data from scratch to project after jobs are complete and to clean up their scratch space to ensure that there is enough room for the job outputs. Additionally, on many HPC systems, scratch spaces are purged at regular intervals, so it's especially important to move your data to a persistent storage location. If you do find that you need additional storage space, we encourage you to use our UBC Arc Chinook Object Storage Platform, details for which can be found in the video notes. We'll now navigate to our scratch space and set up our own working directory, much like we did in Project. 
I'll type in cd then slash scratch slash st hyphen cwl hyphen one and hit enter, then type pwd to confirm where I am. I'll then add my own directory by typing mkdir and my directory name. You may want to create further subdirectories here for the outputs of the various jobs you may run. If we run the print quota command, we can take a look at the scratch space used and our quota limits. As mentioned, one key difference to note between project and scratch is that you have a limit of 1 million files here. Hitting this limit may be one reason why your job could fail, so it's important to communicate with the members of your allocation to keep your scratch storage below its quota limits. Before we wrap up, let's quickly review a few things we covered in this video. When you log into Sakai, you're placed in your own private home directory with 50 gigabytes of storage. Additionally, you have access to two larger directories shared with your team called Project and Scratch. We also used a few commands to navigate around Sakai and get some information about our allocation, which are summarized on this page and in the video notes. And that does it for the Sakai environment. If you have any questions, please feel free to check out our user documentation, which can be found in the video notes, and never hesitate to reach out with questions to arc.support at ubc.ca.